I'm Ann with Clinton Parkway Nursery and we're doing a series of workshops on YouTube for this season so that you'll be safe and you can listen to them whenever you want at home. We're at the corner of Clinton Parkway in Wakarusa in Lawrence, Kansas. So if you're driving by, look for the flowers on the roof. That's kind of our trademark. Hi, I'm Ann with Clinton Parkway Nursery and today we're going to talk about cool season vegetables. So um, I'm just going to kind of lump some of them together for time. but. Uh, the, let's, let's talk about the soil prep and then we'll talk about the individual plants. But uh, the better the soil, the better these plants are going to do on that. So um, the cotton burr compost is what I would suggest using that you mix into the soil so that it makes the soil looser. There's a little bit of nutrients, but the idea is it makes the soil looser so that if it's looser, the roots can go out further. If the roots go out further, then there's more nutrients available because instead of being in a six inch area, now they're in a 12 inch area and think of it, you have twice as much nutrients that will be available to the plant. So the better your soil, the better the plants are going to do. And with the cotton, with the compost, any compost, whether you have, if you have a, your own compost pile, that's great, use it. If you have to buy, you can buy the cotton burr compost or you can buy the soil conditioner from Fertile, or from Fox Farm. And those are excellent organic matter amendments. And those are something that you should use every year. Think of a lettuce plant. You plant it, you cut the tops off, you go take it in, you eat it. Think of the woods. You have the, the, the leaves drop on the trees, nobody goes rakes them up, they break down, so it's a continual application of organic matter. Well, with the lettuce, you just took it away. You took the radish away. You took the tomatoes and when they're done, you put it in the trash and get rid of it. So you've gotten rid of all that organic matter that, or that potential organic matter that could be in the soil. So every year, add some, add some, and even do it two or three times a year is real beneficial. So the better the soils, the better your plants are going to do. Uh, most of these, a lot of these cool season crops, not all of them, but some of them are going to be from transplants. So when they're from transplants, what you want to do is you want to give them a little bit of fertilizer. They have a root system. On that the seeds do not seeds don't need any fertilizer until they start to grow but the plants will what I would suggest using um, when you first plant is the root stimulator it's a starter solution what it has in it it has uh, hormones that the plant produces naturally it has vitamins they found that putting those two together get better growth than each independently and it has a little bit of nutrients not so much to burn it but to get it started on that. I tell people to water it in with this the first three or four times so they can get established and going. Then you can start with a, I'm going to say a regular fertilizer, a traditional fertilizer. Two types, there, well there's, there's many varieties, but let's say two types in that we have a water soluble and we have a granule. Okay, the water soluble is you mix with water, water it in. Now the advantage to it is the plant gets it right away, it gets it today. The disadvantage is it's pretty much gone tomorrow, especially if you water it again without it. So it's quick, the plant can take it up fast, but it doesn't last very long. So you have to do it relatively often. If you read the label on this one for general feeding, it says every other watering. So that's great maybe to get them started, but you know what, I'm not gonna do that all the time. Uh, Fertilone has one called Garden Co. that this is good for six months. So you could put this down you could actually put this down below the plant, below the root zone when you plant, and then it's taken care of for the rest of the season. There are also some that maybe last a month. Follow the directions. It'll tell you that, you know, put it down once a month. You may want to use something like that um, on lettuce rather than the garden coat because your, gar your lettuce is not going to be around for six months. Um, so then as far as planting goes, you can have the, the plants that are, um, and let's say you have really good soil. The plants that are in plants, you're just going to take them out, of, or they're in pots. You're going to take them out of the pot, put them in the ground, plant them at the level they were at. You're going to, I would suggest cabbage, cauliflower, broccoli are your three main ones that you're going to grow from plants. You can also get lettuce, spinach, kale uh, from plants, beets, or not beets, uh, peas sometimes too. Um, and those are fine. You could also direct seed those. When you direct seed, what you want to do is you want to look at the look at the plant, uh, look at the package of your seed. A good quality seed will sit there and tell you that these are spaced in uh, 10 inches apart. The row is 12 inches. They want full sun. Sun. They'll germinate in seven to 10 days, and they'll get about 10 to 12 inches high. So it'll tell you based, and then you know that okay, I can take individual seeds and I can put them every 10 inches apart. 
I could direct sew where I sew a whole bunch and then thin them out. But when I'm done, I want them about 10 inches apart. The reason being is that's how big the plant gets when it's mature. If you plant them five inches apart, they're going to crowd each other and they're not going to reach your maturity. And, you know, lettuce maybe isn't that big of a deal, but if you were doing cabbage or something, it's not going to near, get near as big as it potentially can, or you may have it die out because they're crowding each other out. So you want to kind of follow the directions as far as spacing goes on that. Um, the root crops, your radish, your beets, your carrots, you want to do those, I'm going to say you will do those from seed. That's the easiest way. And um, K-State has a really good publication that will tell you about when to seed. Um, there, you'll see the picture and it'll tell you when to, when to seed and expect a when to harvest. If you look at pretty much everything we're talking about right now, these cool season crops, you can do them in the spring, you can do them again in the fall. So you can have two crops. Peas are probably the only one you really can't do um, in the fall again because they like cool soil to germinate and we don't have cool soil in August and September. But if you look, you can see radishes, hey, I can plant these for, for several weeks and I can do it again in the fall for several weeks. Uh, keep in mind that if it's just uh, you or two or three other people, you don't want to plant the whole package of radish at once. Plant some now, you know, maybe take five or ten seeds and plant them. And then in two weeks, do five or ten more. And then in two weeks, do five or ten more. That way you have some all along rather than, oh no, now I have 27 radishes. What am I going to do with them? Because I have to eat them all myself. So you can stagger crops so that you have th things coming up all along. As it gets warmer, these plants don't like it. They like the cooler weather. They'll start to bolt or go to seed. And when they go to seed, like lettuce, it gets bitter when it goes to seed. So you could, I do know people that here that plant lettuce um, all went summer long, but they harvest it when it's really small so that then it doesn't bolt and, and get bitter on them on that. But um, so those are your root crops. Okay, you have leaf crops. Uh, leaf crops would be lettuce, spinach, chard, kale. Those are ones that basically you eat the lettuce. I mean, you eat the lettuce, eat the lettuce, but eat the leaves too on that. And these are ones that when it warms up and then it, they start to go to seed, then they're not any good at all. So they're just compost. On that, and you can again, you can direct sow them. You can you can harvest these a couple different ways. You can harvest individual leaves so the plant continues on, or you can just cut the whole plant and then have others come on. So those are basically seed. They're very. You'll find they're very very small seeds. Like lettuce actually needs some uh, light to germinate, so you're not going to put it very deep at all on that. So read your read your uh, label or package, and it'll tell you. Beets are one. Forgot to mention this. Beets are one that when you plant them, that the seed, let's say that you plant, is actually three or four plants. And you, if you want good beets, if you're just doing greens, no big deal. But if you want beets, you need to thin it to one plant because otherwise they'll be very small or not very big at all on that. So um, peas, plant peas early. If you haven't got plant peas planted, um, the old timers will tell you you got to plant them in February. It's not worth it. So remember I said earlier, they like cool soil. So get those in the ground really early. Um, if you want to accelerate a little bit, some people will take the seed and overnight they soak them in water so they start to swell up a little bit. If you look at them, they're all shrivelly. When you think of peas that are on your plate, they're all firm and plump. So it kind of speeds up the process. Okay, potatoes. Everyone says St. Patrick's Day is a good time for potatoes. So um, you're going to buy a potato. It's going to look something similar to this. Um, these things coming out are actually the future plants. They're called eyes. And what you want to do, um, if you can, is just take the potato and cut it on that. Cut it in, it depends on how big it is. I'm going to cut this one in three pieces. But see, I've got an eye on a piece. I've got an eye on a piece. Don't worry about it too much. You can just, on the bigger ones, you can just cut it into quarters. This one was smaller, so I did thirds. If they're smaller yet, you can do halves. And then, ideally, what you want to do is just let this set for a couple three days because then what it will do it will callus over and then when you plant it it doesn't rot when you plant potatoes you want to put about um, six to eight inches or it's probably six inches four to six inches over the top of it space them about like this and they're slow to come up just be patient it's cold out there but st patrick's day is a time you can start it isn't that you can't do it if you do it after st patrick's day but that's the earliest i would probably do it onions you're going to get the little the sets or the plants the sets, they look like baby onions. You're going to space them probably about four inches apart. Uh, put them just barely over in the soil. 
the sets, uh, those are sets, sets come in um, red, white, or yellow. Usually they are a little more uh, uh, hardier as far as storage. The white ones are kind of sweeter, the yellow ones are good storage, the red are hamburger. On your plants, that's where you get the, the what they say, the sweet onions. I don't like onions, so to me it's not a sweet onion. But um, there'll, there'll be plants and you just plant them, break them apart, in the, you'll have a bundle of them, break them individually apart and plant them just barely in the ground. Uh, space them probably about four inches apart and then make sure you water them well when they're done. So that's kind of it. So then, uh, okay, harvest, you harvest when it's ripe. Okay, now your leaf crops, your uh, lettuce, your kale, your uh, beets, your spinach, you can harvest those just about any time. When they start to get a little bit of size and they got a couple, three inches, you can harvest them for early greens um, or what do they call it, microgreens, let's say. Um, or you can let them get bigger, but harvest them as you go along. Broccoli and cauliflower will look like they do in the store, but what you want to do is you want to, you don't want to, you're not going to get them as big as in the store because they bring them in from somewhere where it's ideal conditions for growing. We can grow a lot of things and we can grow broccoli and we can grow cauliflower, but it's not going to be as big as you're usually used to on that. So when it gets that size, looks nice and plump, then, then uh, harvest them. Cabbage, squeeze it. If it's hard and, and firm, then, then go ahead and cut it off. Broccoli will um, send up side shoots and you'll get a second crop. Cabbage and cauliflower, you're pretty much done when you harvest the plant or harvest the crop. So go ahead and get rid of the plant. Uh, beets and, and uh, carrots and radishes, just pull one and see if it's big enough. If it's big enough, then you'll know that, okay, I can pull some. You can also see the size of them, of the plant itself. You look and say, oh, this one's a bigger one. It'll probably have a bigger uh, root on it than the others do. So you can also sequence your crop that way too, that, okay, I plant, but you're not gonna get it as drawn out as you would if you plant seed every week or two on that. Um, Okay, that's it for cold crops. If you have questions, give us a call or give us an email. We'll help help you out.